Hey everyone and welcome back. We covered a ton of content around different types of design theories, like anything in relation to like the basics in terms of like typography, color, forms, grids. I mean, we've covered in the beginning more wireframe basics stuff, uh, user flows. And now I think it's time to start building up our fidelity. Now this is a big topic in the design realm, I would say, in terms of like, where do we start? How do we end up somewhere? And design fidelity is just, it's something hard. And I don't know if there's any really right answer. I guess you can just say that we should always start just quick and, you know, start with your sketches. I have here our wireframes that we designed, which were really great. Here's our homepage. And we should really start somewhere like here and build our way up over time. Now, nothing is ever designed and perfected in the same step. This is something that never happens. Getting to those final like beautiful designs, that takes a lot of testing and refinement. And that's why we use those prototypes that we made. And that's why we use like these wireframes and sketches that we created. You wanna continuously build upon your learnings instead of jumping right into beautiful designs. And you saw that and how we've handled that over this entire course. We've started with sketching and we gradually started to build our way up. We've covered a lot of different topics around style. And I think now is the time to really kind of start to think about that. But before we get into that, I think it's a great segue into, you know, thinking about building, measuring and learning. And that's something I always try to incorporate in my designs and my design process. This is something you should really apply to everything you do. And you should go out and read the book Lean Startup. It's an amazing book. And it really teaches this build, measure, learn cycle. So build is to explore your ideas and prototype those possibilities, like we were talking about with those basic prototyping and wireframing. Measuring, you know, testing your assumptions always. Go out there and user test, just put it in front of a user, get their feedback quickly. And the next step is learning. So learn from the, that feedback, learn from your users and validate uh, just so you can squash your assumptions, just so you can get right back into building again. Think of it as a circular cycle. So build, measure, learn. Keep that always at the center of your design process. That's what I feel like we've done here thus far. I mean, we haven't user tested just yet, but we've built a lot of designs just basically uh, with wireframes, sketches. We've also went into different things like typography. So this is the type system that I've started to build out, not finalized just yet. I've picked a typeface I'm using Leto or Lato, and I've created a bunch of styles and just headings, text. So I, I have started to think about these types of things. What I would do in my process is to, you know, see what works in terms of visual exploration, in terms of typography, and start to build up to that and see what we need. Even color palette, this is what we've kind of built together and this isn't finalized at all. And we should continuously try to incorporate that into our designs and just see where we kind of lead. We may cut colors like these colors. We may just stick with like a monochromatic scheme. So it's, that's just something to think about. You have to kind of explore all these different styles. We also kind of jumped right into our form exploration when we were talking about uh, form best practices. So you could see that we're using some of our own um, colors uh, here. We were starting to see what uh, different types of inputs could look like when they're disabled like these buttons, we could start seeing what these types of things could look like, uh, these little checkbox squares. We also started to think about like just general hierarchy when it comes to uh, copy and the way we lay that out. In essence, you, what you wanna do is you wanna seek your feedback early and go on to learn and apply. This is how you build an understanding about the product you're building, but this is also how you build and reach that level and type of fidelity that resonates with your users. So the reason we seek feedback is to use those learnings to inform and improve our designs. Waiting too late to test or find that feedback, and then it often is just way too late to actually act on that feedback and it could be way too costly. So use those low fidelity wireframes. Let's just go back to that quickly. So use these to start getting feedback early and then you can continue to improve on your product and build up that fidelity and continue to test. You shouldn't just test with these designs. They may not actually do good at testing like those small micro interactions or just motion in general and stuff like that. And we'll get into that. But 
These are great for testing things like hierarchy, layout, the type of content you have, that placement, maybe just navigation, a hierarchy as well. So use that as a way to just validate your assumptions. This can really have a massive impact on how we build out certain elements. So in an example, typography. Are things legible? Can people read this small copy? Are things readable? Is there enough hierarchy and contrast between typographic elements? Like if I were to think about contrast and hierarchy, I would go right into like just product details. If I squint, are things blurring together? So I'm looking to create that contrast early on and test that. What about the hierarchy of information? Are things in the right place? Does this make sense in terms of the homepage? How about, does the navigation structure need to be reworked? Is this accessible? Is it usable? Should we stop using the search at the top and incorporate it maybe into the navigation? So these are questions that we're asking ourselves. What about the style of our components? Does the style of this card over here make things look too condensed? Does this button, like these kind of square buttons that I have, or this button, do they look clickable or does it seem clickable? Does it seem like a user can interact with it? Are inputs actually working properly? Oop. Let's move that. Let's go back to our, uh, our registration form. So we have all these inputs. I mean, do they, do they work properly? Do users easily interact with this? So we're testing all of these assumptions that we have. It has a really profound impact on all of our choices and you shouldn't be making large decisions without proper feedback. So I just wanted to take the time to stress this because a lot of people like to really jump into high fidelity designs right off the bat and that is just a no-no. Start with your sketches, gradually build yourself up because if you start with beautiful designs, without figuring out if certain things do not work or do work, then you're setting yourself up for a big surprise later on when you actually deliver that to users and you find out, you know, maybe users aren't interacting, users aren't getting too deep into the funnel of like checking out or even using your application. So remember to always test your wireframes, just get feedback early and learn from it and then jump into designs and visual exploration later on and gradually build up that fidelity. That's all I wanted to say about how to build design fidelity. Next, we're actually going to jump in and start doing that ourselves. We're going to start working on the homepage next. That will be, I think, a great start to figuring out, you know, the type of color palette that we want to incorporate, our typography system, fleshing that out some more, just generally seeing what types of components that we're going to have to build for in the future. Can't wait to get you back in here and working on the homepage.